Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre on the Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy, and today I have an amazing guest. Her name's Steph, and I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. I am Stephanie, um, CEO of One Blue Heart at a Time. I am the mother of Sebastian, an awesome boy in the autism spectrum, who is 15 years old. And um, thank you for having me again. This is my second time. I know the first one, guys, we had to scrap the episode, but this time it's going to be good. Um, So today's topic is transportation for students with special needs. And the reason why the topic came up is that basically Stephanie and I have been dealing with transportation ever since our kids got diagnosed. And um, this summer I had to deal with a whole new facet of the transportation um, issue. because of summer school and summer rising. So, um, you know, this is not the first time that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on that parents are not informed. So kind of I wanted to sh- shine a light on our and share our experiences to help other moms. Because I know when you first get your kid diagnosed and they're put into a school setting, it's very, like, overwhelming, right, to deal with all that all the issues for the transportation and that you don't know what to expect or what to do or what you can do if things are not going as planned. So um, we're just going to get started with the topic. Okay. Um, what's your child's diagnosis? You said uh, Sebastian has autism. Yes, yeah. right? Sebastian's on the autism spectrum, yes. Okay. And um, it is it, he's nonverbal, correct? So he's verbal. Limited? Um, what happens with Bash is that you have to give him multiple choices when you ask him a question okay. in order for him to answer or carry on a conversation. Because if you just say, Sebastian, how you're doing? It's gotten a little better, but he would, because that's something that everyone asks him. So mm-hmm. he might just, for that particular question, he might just answer good. But if you ask him, how was your day at school, which is something that not everyone asks Mm -hmm. all the time, you have to give him multiple choices. So was it good or bad? And he'll tell you. He usually says good. He's in a really good um, environment. Mm -hmm. And he usually says good, which wasn't always the case um, now. But um, and then you'd be like, did you play with your friends? And sometimes I don't have to say yes or no. Like, that's a question that... I guess makes him happy. He's in a stage where I feel like he likes friends and I feel like he's sick of me. Like he does everything (laughs) with me. So whenever we say the word friends, automatically it just, he attaches the words yes to it. So yes, he is verbal. Okay, good. He just um, has something called echo speech. Echo, echolalic speech. Echo, I can never pronounce it. (laughs) But um, he has that and he just repeats the same thing you tell him. And the way we're correcting that is by asking questions with multiple choices so we got to kind of you know make a routine or a pattern to know Mm -hmm. that when someone's asking you something you have to repeat what answer not repeat the question or maybe he's just sarcastic no (laughs) No, that was a joke no aiden does the same thing like he like the echolalic speech it depends if he's like completely focused on the question or if he's just kind of like Dealing with you, como pa de ti. He'll just repeat what you said sometimes. So yeah, echolalic speech is something that a lot Very of the kids, yeah, yeah. On, the, on the spectrum are dealing with. Um, so we we talked about this the first episode, but it never aired. So when did you notice that Bastion was a little different? Um, I feel like my son reached all his milestones um, between the ages of one to three. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I am not saying vaccines cause autism and I am not advising no one to not vaccinate their child, right? But um, there's also been many cases to say, to support what I just say, that people say that they develop autism at a later age, right? So with my son, um, I believe after his, you know, he was a boy, he was the first grandson, the first, we're all girls in my Mm -hmm. house. So, you know, he was all over the place, you know, um, at a very young age. But when there was delayed and I started losing eye contact and there was more of a frustration behavior that not I understand as a frustration behavior, Mm -hmm. right? After I got educated on it. But um, it was after the after one of the vaccines that he has. Like I can really say the name because I do have a nonprofit and I don't want it to come back like, well, Steph said not to give this because it cost his song and then I don't want it like no backlash. Yeah. But after that vaccine, I really saw this connection from my son. 
Yeah. Um, the, can I, was that what caused it? No, but to answer your question, after the age of like three and a half, we got early intervention and, you know, we started getting, I didn't let them label him. I was so caught up on the label. Yeah. Right? I think that was like my coping um, way of coping of not accepting the diagnosis. Yeah. It was so, it's so weird now that I think about it. Mm-hmm. I was so stuck on that freaking label. Like I was fighting, forget about him having it. I just didn't want them to put the autism on him. Like mm-hmm. it was just like, and you know, now that I think about it, I'm like, bro, I wish I would just been like, okay, here's, let's get it. But I did get him early intervention for speech and yeah. I did start with OT. And, um, you know, here we are. Um, 12 years later. Yeah. So definitely that label thing, uh, I, I like I actually have the first episode for this second half of the season uh, talks about that in our communities, right? There's this big, like it's un cuco, like it's a big bad wolf. Like everybody's scared of giving a label to your child, right? Mind you, nobody has to know that your kid has autism unless you tell them, right? Um, This is something I tell my parents. I'm like, nobody has to know your kid has autism unless you feel comfortable telling that person. Teachers are not going around like, Hey, that kid's autistic in school because that's actually illegal. <laughs> Unless the person works with the child and they have access to their IEP. And even when they do have access to the IEP, they can't share that information with anybody. Right. So it's, it, you know, it's something that, but that's something that we, I didn't know that. You didn't know that. So I know that because I'm a teacher. So it's something that like, I want to, I want to like educate people more, a little bit more about it because even now people our age or younger than us are still having issues with having their kids labeled and giving them an IEP. So I, I agree with what you're saying, but to me, it was more of people not giving him a fair chance. Mm-hmm. I didn't want the autism to identify my son mm-hmm. because there are so many more layers yes. to him than that. And I felt like if I got him diagnosed as such, you know, labeled, let me rephrase that, labeled at such an early age, everybody was already going to treat him at a disadvantage. And mm-hmm. that was like something that was, I didn't want for my child. Yeah. Like, so that was more my thing where, where it came, you know, um, Sebastian has never been in schools like in, how do you call it? Like, in, it's not inclusive, like when the general education setting. No, he's mm-hmm. always been in, in special needs setting. So I never really had that thing. He got offered now a lottery to go into school, whereas, you know, kids that are not on the spectrum and kids who are on the spectrum. And after I went, it wasn't for my son. Well, the Autism Nest Program? Or it's the uh, uh, Atmosphere that new school oh. that they have here in Van Cortland. And oh, uh, they, I think it's, it's like a charter school, no? Yeah, it's a okay. charter school, but I declined. Okay. Not not because the school's bad. The program is great. I just feel my son is not ready for that. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right. So um, he did get early intervention. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna get into the um the topic. So, uh, does he get transported to school on a bus? Yes, he does. A lot of the times I take him and I pick him up because Mm -hmm. as you can see, she walked in. I'm like doing business stuff. I'm (laughs) I'm like, oh, you know, my, like I, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and, you know, it gives you, it gave me the freedom to always be able to make all the meetings and Mm -hmm. all the stuff that Sebastian needed, especially at the beginning of the diagnosis. There is a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, my schedule is not consistent. So even with you, like even you ask me, like, Steph, we have to redo this. It took me a little while because yeah. it really <laughs> is crazy. And, like, you know, so anyways. um, So, yes, he does. Busing was a nightmare. Yeah. Now it's better because, you know, he's just so easygoing. Mm-hmm. But I have pulled my son off the, bu- off the bus before like, wait you gotta tell you gotta tell the whole story about what happened because you told me about this i already know about it she gets triggered guys sorry so she um it was told me about it still before. makes me red she like, gets mad okay so you know i'm going through all these evaluation my kid is like seven or eight at this time he hates school i don't understand him he don't understand me they're picking him up like at 6 45 in the morning i mean like even us adults that have to wake up so if you're picking him up at 6 45 that means i have to have my kid up by six mm-hmm. um you know it's then it, it could be 6 45 but from 6 45 it could go to 7 a.m in the morning and then you're outside and then you have a kid who's autistic like why are we not moving why mm-hmm. are we standing here it's cold you have certain bus drivers that 
there's a certain bus drivers that will work with you and be like, I'll tell you, I'll text you once to come down mm -hmm. because you're humans and they understand. Or they and, have children themselves. Right. Or they, it's just like being a courteous, person, especially yeah. if you know, it's just being a good human, right? It's not like cell phone plans is charging you per text. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It costs you zero dollars to do that. But even the people that are picking him up now, she hasn't given me her number. She's just like, well, you know, I can't call you every time. I'm like, relax. She's nice. She's very nice. Oh my God, but she fun. looks like, you know, she's following the, the, the rules to whatever. Anyway, so fast forward this night, you know, I'm working nights like six days out of the week at that time. I am flying in and out like i'm literally staying up from closing working the night the club um i was a waitress for a while long very long time um closing out getting home taking a shower drinking coffee or having an extra red bull just to stay up because if i close my eyes i'm not That's getting right. him on the bus <laughs> and um it was something you know so i'm down there waiting like she didn't even say good morning. She didn't say like anything to me. And her energy was just, I forgot exactly what was that I asked her. And she's like snapped on me. And it took me like five seconds to get it. Like when the doors closed mm -hmm. and like, there's like a stop sign. Um, At the end of the block. Right. And it just hit, like it clicked on me. I literally ran behind the bus, knocked on the back of the window, knocked on the door, like I was in tears. I was like, give me my asking son right now. It was like, oh, has she opened the door? The driver looked at her. She looked at her. They were like, get this lady her kid because this is not like I called, I reported. I, I mean, I don't know what happened with that. It was what, like seven years ago now. Um, I don't know if they ever got fired, but they were never my son's drivers again. Mm -hmm. So because my son was you know, having tantrums, behavior issues, mm -hmm. let me rephrase that, was having behavior issues, was very limited in his communication. And if someone that was going to be on that bus with him for an hour and a half had that type of energy and had that that the short leader. fuse, it was not someone that I wanted my son mm -hmm. around. And with my, I wanted, to, I don't want you to take from my experience the outburst. What I want you to take from my experience is whatever you don't feel comfortable with, with your child, remove him from it. Yep. Even if it's a speech therapist, if it's a school, if it's a teacher, if you have to wait six months, because that's another topic, how yeah. long all, it takes for all these services yeah. to come through, um, wait. I'm sorry, wait, I am not going to risk me going to jail because somebody did um, something to my son. Hold on, my ear pod is still on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was my bus experience. And after that, you, like, when I tell you I showed up at this 675 that day with my son, I, like, if you could call... What's a Karen for a Dominican? Like a Maria, una Juana, something. No, you turned into a Karen Karen. Like, that, it and was, it's okay. It was I, like, yo, I called everyone. I emailed Channel Bronx News. Like, it was... So then again, everything was like smooth after that. Mm -hmm. And half of the time, he never goes in the morning because I always have to be somewhere by like 9.30. I'm always up running around early. So I let my son like skip the breakfast part part in school he'll just have breakfast with me at home and then he'll make it in time for the first period yeah know? so and that has worked you know he enjoys school he sleeps a little bit more it's just different it's, it's different whatever works for you yeah. at the end of the day but there's a lot of moms but i could do that because i don't have to be at a desk at mm -hmm. 9 a.m right i don't have a consistent schedule so it's like the gift and the curse mm -hmm. it, right a mom that has to be at work that baby has to get on that bus Girl, at 6 45. <laughs> Because remember, school don't open to 820. Yeah. So they have to, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, why is this system so broken? And and it's the lack of the thing. Okay, so I want to touch on like, like three things that you said. So like, it's the lack of communication between the busing company and the parent, right? That's one. The busing company and the school. That's another lack of communication, right? There was a time this year. Was it this year? Yeah, this year. They switched Aiden's bus route. I don't know where. I don't know where. Nobody told me. I I call the bus matron because I see that they're not 
she hadn't texted me this okay so this is i have had good luck in the last two years the most the bus matrons i've had which um i don't know if people are listening that don't have kids that have special needs but there's a person that rides on the bus with the bus driver that is in charge of the children um not in charge of them like a para but basically they're just there to ensure that the kids have their seatbelts on that everybody's sitting on the bus that everybody's safe right so i've had good experiences in that the bus matrons that i've had have been calling me like hey marcia we're gonna be there in five minutes come down with the kids yeah i've been having those the past few years right? i've been very lucky with those yeah. so you know that's not always the case so i'm i call the bus matron she picks up she's like oh marcia he's not on the bus route anymore i'm like and who was gonna tell me the school didn't tell me um opt didn't tell me i get it that they have a new online system because now it's like through that new york city schools account Mm -hmm. I have to set that up there. now that you remember me. So I, I have a thing, I have a link here that I'm going to put in the show notes and I'll give it to you too. So basically in New York City students accounts, what they do is that they, if they switch the child's route, the information is there, but nobody told me that, nobody informed me. And I work for the Department of Education. Right. So how are we supposed to do, know those things? Let me so yeah, like um, that was one thing, the lack of communication, which is like really frustrating. And, and I can see how certain parents, like if they have, just had their child diagnosed can be frustrated like there has been times that i'm running down the stairs with my kid because nobody called me running down the stairs with aiden and he was a bit he was a baby he was like three or four years old with him on my back because he couldn't go down the stairs by himself me running sweating crying almost the bus is there they see me coming down and they drive off oh that's happened that's happened like how freaking inhuman can you be like and then now I have to figure out how am I going to get my kid to school? What? Yeah. So it's the lack of communication and, and the fact that a lot of the people that work on the buses don't have experience with kids with special needs. Right. They have no idea how to deal with them. They're like, Oh, your kid, your kid is um, talking all the time. Or like, for example, Aiden, you know, he does like a Lelic speech, but with him is like when he's using, um, the iPad, He'll repeat, or like when he's on his phone, he'll repeat the the speech from the thing, and he gets loud. But okay, yeah, they don't they don't know how to deal with that. They don't give. I don't think they give him a training of how to work with kids with special needs. I don't know if that has been in your experience. Um, that to me more than before that, I think the biggest thing is the way they do these routes. Definitely. So. If your kid, his zone school or the zone route should be for the three, that bus, bus route should not be picking up a kid that's in the Bronx. So far, if your kid's school is 20 minutes. So, for example, Sebastian's school was literally 20 minutes or 15 minutes without traffic from where we used to live. Mm -hmm. And the school opens at 820. And I'm telling you, they used to pick him up at 645 in the morning. Why? Mm hmm so you were going to go all the way across with my kid and then come back with him. That was my biggest thing. Like, and still like, um, the whole school year, I dropped him off in the morning because it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. The bus was picking him up at six 30 and mind just Sebastian school. We travel all the time. We on four or five hour, you know, flights, mm -hmm. we, we get to the airport. Like, you know, we've worked with all those things, but I'm not exposing my kid to waking up at six in the morning to drive for an hour and a half on a bus when his school's right there. So now with the staff, I think it should be, you know, with the with the lady in the bus, it should depend on the or where the child is on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So if the child on the spectrum is, you know, more severe than others, I think there should be some type of training mm -hmm. to deal with any type of emergencies and because ieps are so mandatory it's all there mm -hmm. it's very this is why i don't understand why the system is broken so if your child has like time travel limitations if your child needs help going up the little steps in the bus mm -hmm. if your child you know um gets half flashes it has to have a bus with what work in ac mm -hmm. if they need you know if they have problems with touching and they have to sit by themselves like all of these things are on the bus yep on the, on the IEP. iep so why isn't that when you're taking this route these things aren't applied and and why these routes don't make sense. Like, why don't, why is there not a law that for special needs pickup? Because it's a difference. You mm -hmm. know, our kids get the little buses, mm -hmm. other kids get the big ones. So 
why isn't it like if in this school in this radius area is like and i know some other kids have to travel further than others yeah, yeah, you know for their services that is understandable but if the child is in within 20 minutes radius from the school there shouldn't be no more than a 45 minute round no. to an hour pushing it so and let me tell you what is it uh 12 years in the system nothing's changed no it, it's gotten a little like i'm not gonna say it has been completely like horrible the whole time yeah it has changed a little bit there's certain people that have been employed but i have had actually to like escalate it to the point of emailing the ceo of a company of one of the bus companies to have my son transferred and speaking to the person that's in charge of routing for the office of people transportation because of the issues that I was having. First of all, um, the bus driver was always absent. Um, they always had a sub, right? Which means that then now your child gets there later, mm -hmm. dropped off later because they have to find, like, you know, they have to go search for, for a driver. And, and the person quit in the middle of the year. Oh, wow. So they kept having to have substitute bus drivers, right? Mm -hmm. The bus ride was crazy. They weren't leaving on time. I was getting to work late. It got to a point that I was just like, you know, like, what the heck am I going to do? That, that was like a really frustrating year. It was like one of those years that I was just like, mental health wise, I wasn't doing well because like I was stressed out from work. And then on top of that, all these busing problems. Right. So it was just like, it was just too much. And then the thing is like, no parents should have to deal with that because you're already dealing with your kid. Your kid already has so many needs and there's so many things que tu tienes que estar pendiente. Like there's, there's no need for the transportation, which is something that should be easy. Should be smooth. It should, be, should smooth be smooth. Transition. Yes, I agree. But even though you said it's gotten a little better, I have to disagree with you. Um, in the support group yeah. that we're in, you're in that group. Yeah. All these moms are having the same problems we had 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So did the system get better or our children? improved yeah. where it made it easier for us now because sebastian understands if a bus is running late he's not going to throw himself on the floor like he used to before oh my he's going to wait you remember that <laughs> <laughs> oh um God. you know how can i ever forget <laughs> so, it needs to do the same thing because the thing is that they have issues waiting there there's like uh, it's a routine it's yeah. not the issue the issue is the bus company mm -hmm. the kids are fine Mm -hmm. They have a routine that they're getting adjusted to. At a certain age, I always say like between three to eight, like those five years were like intense for me and Bash. Mm -hmm. Like he was arguing with me, I was arguing with him. It was what it was. We'll cry, he'll cry, he'll swing, I swing. It was it was bad. <laughs> um but we, we, we got through it, right? Yeah. Um because that's what I tell every parent. It gets better. No matter how bad it is now, mm -hmm. it's gonna get better. Yeah. Um so with that being said, it's like, okay, so if I'm already telling you or prepping you before bed, remember, we're going to get early, the bus, mm -hmm. I'm trying to teach you time. This is the time. This is what it is. If he's downstairs waiting cranky and it's the time and it's not the bus, I, he does not understand late. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get it. Well, at that time he didn't. Now he does, but yeah. he didn't get it. So the system is still the same. And that support group that Mercy and I are in is, was constantly... Especially Mom, at the beginning of the school year. They won't even show up. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't gotten better. Like, I just hate it. I think everything should be fired and redone. <laughs> I agree. And or or I feel that maybe for District 75, each school should be granted a certain amount of bus specifically for that school. Yes, I agree with that. You know, and the same paras that work with your kids in that same school get to supervise if needed on the bus and go back and forth. Like, that's the simplest way. Like, life could be so simple. People just make it complicated. And it, it's just like, there's so much paperwork and so much red tape for things that it's crazy. Like, we can't step on the, I, that's another thing I don't know if people know. You can't go on the bus with your kids. Oh, I'll go. I won't go traveling with him, but I'm going up the two stairs and I'm seeing where you're sitting. My no, definitely I'll look, right? But then the thing is, like, they they get, like, all, like, um nervous that you can't be on the bus. I guess people have done things in the past before, but, are, like, you got to know your audience, también, because 
you're not gonna go on the bus and like try to put your hands on a kid or hit a bus driver. Well, or but like somebody that. else might. That's I know that's not what I'm while our kids yeah. are there, so it's cool. But I am going to see where you're sitting, my kid. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna see. I wait. I wait, and I watch how the interaction. I'm crazy like that. So I watch the interaction of how the bus matron walks in into his seat and like how she speaks to him to have him sit down and all of that before I walk back upstairs. Because sometimes I just give the kid and run away, which is fine. Because if you're on a time schedule, that's fine. But yeah, no, no. But wait, five minutes is not going to mean nothing. Or yeah. two minutes. It literally, oh, they're driving off right away. Trust me, it's not going to take long. But I want to say also that my approach and my energy has changed. Mm -hmm. When I had the argument with the bus driver, I was very angry. I was very, very angry um, because my son had this condition. Mm -hmm. was newly diagnosed. And I was angry. And I would lash different. And my energy was, everything was so defensive with me. Mm -hmm. Now, hi, good morning. How are you? My name is Stephanie. This is my son, Sebastian. Sebastian, say good morning. I'm like, morning. And like, you know, <laughs> and he will say it. And I feel like right away, that brings people out of ease. Yes. You know, but it's because that's where I'm at now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just. Yeah, I was going to I was going to piggyback off of what you said. That's like another thing. Like, that's one of the tips that I have for the comadres is basically, you know, when you first meet that bus driver, like smile, you know, introduce yourself, tell them what you do. You know, like, you know, because I'm a New York City school teacher. I'm like, listen, I need you guys to let me know exactly what time you're coming, because that means that if you're late. I'm going to be late for my students. So we need to be on the same page that if the bus is running late, call me at 530. I don't care. Like, I'll pick up the phone. But just let me know so that I can have a contingency plan and I can plan in my head what I'm going to do. And if I have to be coming late to work, I'll come in late. But just, like, let me know. Don't, like, not let me know until, like, the moment of and I'm calling you, like, five minutes before you're supposed because, to call me. Yeah, or because you're five minutes late. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, whatever. Like, the, this is the thing. Like, that that first introduction and bringing your energy down and, like, coming at them from a place of love, not for them, obviously, but a place of love for your child, but, like, letting them know that you're there for them and that you're there to help, like, whatever situation, that you're there to support them as well. Because, like, at the end of the day, like we said, they don't really get any training. So, mm -hmm. you know, us as parents, we're there also to educate and help them as well, as long as, obviously, they're willing to to learn and to hear us and, and see where we're coming from as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, you know, just a lot of patience with the bus companies. I, it hasn't changed. Same shit. You know, you get lucky enough to, you know, get someone that's relatable and nice. You know, it's okay, but take your son off the bus. If they have to miss school and you got to drop them off your mom's, then do that and get your, yourself ready to work. Yeah. And paper trail. All that call and all yes. that stuff, no, like emails and, you know, who do you contact? Who did you speak to? And taking pictures of like your son waiting for the bus and uh, encircling the time that mm -hmm. you went down and the, how long you waited before it got there. That's what I mean by paper trail because Definitely. if not, they won't. Nothing happens. And whenever you have an issue with the bus, please call. I know that you, people get frustrated. They're tired. They got to rush to work, whatever the case may be. You need to, as you're on your way to work, give a call to OPT, to the Office of People Transportation. Get on the phone, get a complaint number. Call the person that's in charge of busing at the school. Give them that complaint number as well. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, is like it, it shouldn't just stay with you. You should have this written down. I was able to have them switch the bus route because of a, um, unruly, because of that bus driver and the bus matron were wild that year. So um, I had like a a, a full note. Can I speak to your like manager? Like one of those notes on the on the iPhone. Time, day, all the complaint numbers, and then when I wrote that email that I escalated to the CEO of the company, I was able to come with data and information and and to the router as well, and I CC'd everybody, so everybody knew that where where we were at, and the principal también. Of course, because the thing is that and they got changed. Yeah, and they got changed, and 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 the thing is, I feel like now an OPT. They have me as like <laughs> the crazy mom and I don't care. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, because like I don't I, like people don't mess with me. Like people go ahead and they call and everything. But the thing is like it shouldn't have to be that it gets to that point. You know what I'm saying? But it is. It does. It's unfair and we have to not only advocate but also deal with the busing. And and what what hurts me the most, like in in, you know, for Spanish families who are not very fluent. In yeah, English, that's it's problem. very hard for them. 
it's very, very hard for them. So if you know a mom who you could help that's going through any of that, because I've done it before, I call for her, you know, I tell her what to write, I tell her what to do, you know, um, definitely help definitely help or at least take her in the right direction for someone that could assist her yeah or him because that's the whole thing like you know the purpose of the podcast is not just to like talk shit about the <laughs> of the transportation situation but is is the issue the purpose there's is to create community to say. i mean the, the there's nothing positive to say yes but what i'm saying is like creating community as well so like what yes, you're saying yes, yes. yes, yes. We are here for each other. We like you have we have each other's back. So that that's the whole thing. So the whole issue that I went through this summer was that they're offering after school for the kids in summer rising. So our kids already are in a twelve month program, but they were offering an additional after school program that they get out at six o'clock. But it's not like academic. It's more like they're doing fun activities. I love that. Right. So then um I was able to get him into a school close by, which is um on 167th street around there mm -hmm. um so that school whatever they have a bus that picks him up from the school his daytime school drops him off in the afternoon and then we had to figure out transportation for the evening right by law they're supposed to give us transportation so i thought that they were going to have the small buses come and pick up the kids and drop them off at the house no what they ended up doing now they have this r shared ride thing so um, any other parents that are having kids in the after school program. So basically you have ride share. That's what it's called. So you have a ride share program. So you're getting a voucher from Uber or you're using another company that's going to pick you up in a taxi from your home and drop you off at the after school location. And then you have another taxi that's going to pick you up from the school location and drop you off home. But your son has to be with someone. Yeah, they, okay. they cannot go by themselves. Okay. So it's either you or a caretaker that you yeah, have yeah, or a babysitter. Yeah. And that's amazing. Right? That's great. But the thing is, nobody gave you information about it. And then the 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 fucking the orientation they had was like last minute. They sent the, the email at 12 p.m. I'm teaching. I didn't get to see the thing. So I had no idea how it was supposed to thing. I thought it was already set up by them, which which is usually what happens. But no, that wasn't the case. I had to call, 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 call up until Monday. When did he start last week? He started on Monday. Okay. So up until Monday afternoon, four o'clock, was that the the principal from the site where he's at has to call and get the voucher activated and something, whatever. Anyway, by Tuesday, it was fine. But the whole thing is like, if you have a summarizing program, make sure that the principal from the site is taking care of that transportation for you. you. By law, you are not supposed to have to pay for transportation for your child. And if you do, there is a reimbursement as well, which is online. And I can drop that link in the show notes as well. Um, That's amazing. You right? can share that link. I need that link. Too. Yeah. And then another thing that I see, have you ever seen stuff, these little buses that look like um, SUVs? Yes. Yes. I've always wondered, like, how, how, how do the kids get on those buses? I don't know. I don't know if it's um, because they have to be, like, wheelchair accessible But no, but okay, it's not even wheelchair accessible. It's like a jeepeta. That's a, that's a school bus. But I, I, I saw it a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. It, like, and then that's another thing. Like, if you don't know, it's like you're blind. You, nobody's going to give you the information. You have to, like, literally claw your way. That's another thing. I encourage the comadres research ask people ask questions you're not gonna look stupid the oh, yeah, the no. no question is stupid like you need to ask somebody if you don't know you don't know that's it and word of mouth is like the the biggest reference for me like mm -hmm. nothing you know it's no better reference than from another awesome mom or awesome dad you yeah know, when it comes to this so yeah, so that's that with transportation. Definitely. Um, so the tips that we're gonna summarize right now were um make sure you make friends with the bus matron and the bus driver. Mm -hmm. Set up your New York City um student account. Is yes. that what you call it? Yeah. Um also um get the information of the person that's in charge of busing in your child's school. And whoever the person that is in charge of that bus company, get their email as well. I know they're not going to give it to you off the bat, but if you make friends with people on the phone, somebody's going to give you that person's email. Um, it's always good to have it in your back pocket. You never know when you're going to need it. Um, if you need information regarding busing, make sure you visit schools.nyc.gov, school life slash transportation.
Um, so the kids that don't have to have busing and obviously, you know, in New York City schools, you get Metro cards and then um, the kids that are in general ed also get stop to school transportation. But that all has to do with um, the child, how far the child is from the school. But for children in District 75 and that have special needs, um, special transportation is mandated. It's part of the IEP. Make sure that if you need busing, it needs to be on the IEP. It can't just be that the school's gonna give you a bus and then if you switch to school, then that arrangement is not gonna transfer. Right. You have to make sure that's added to your IEP. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, my, I'm looking at my notes, guys. Okay, and if you move, oh, another thing. Okay, if you're switching the drop-off or pickup location, it takes two weeks to change. So- Or a month. Or a month, depending on how backlogged they are. So make sure that as soon as you know, if you're going to move, change that route so that you don't have that lag, that lag in time or that you have to continue to drop the child off in the old location so that they can get to school. Um, that's another thing that I didn't know. Oh, and then if you're gonna have somebody else pick them up, that's not you, that is not on the thing, you have to get an authorization and have them sign and it's, it has to be notarized as well, mm -hmm. which is another pain in the butt. Like who needs a notary, whatever. Um, yeah, when we have FaceTime. I know. <laughs> uh, come on. Okay, children that are not able to sit in the school bus, in the in the chair, they are entitled to a, um, a car seat. Mm -hmm. Aiden had to have a car seat for a very long time. I didn't know that. I didn't know that they were entitled, that Aiden needed a car seat. Yeah, he needed one because he would get up, like, when he mm -hmm. was, like, three. Not because, yeah, he was three. He was, like, get up. He would take off the, the seatbelt, run around the bus. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, a safety issue. So we had to add that to the IEP and have them have him with a car seat. And he needed a bus power for a very long time when he was mm -hmm. little, too. Um, it was a whole Did thing. Did a bus power? No. It was a whole thing because Aiden was... He's not an aggressive kid, but he has his moments. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what was going on. There was, oh, and that's another thing that they don't think about the mix of the kids. Cause like, just like you think of the mix of the kids in the classroom, you should be thinking about the mix of the kids on the bus. So Aiden gets triggered really by noise. So mm -hmm. he gets triggered by noise. And there was a kid that was always screaming on the bus. So I feel like that was triggering him to get up and then, you know, walk around or like try to help comfort the kid, which is like, Squeezing them and helping them to get calm down, but it looks like aggressive behavior. So that's interesting that you say that because was it? I think it was last year. There was a Sebastian's a tall, tall boy. Um, there was a uh, another um, student on the bus who was extreme, like three times Sebastian's size, and he was very, very. I don't know. I don't know the kid's age, and he was very, very aggressive. Like to the wind, like everything will be quiet and automatically he would just make a really loud noise or just punch something. Oh my and my son became terrified of him. I assume. It was like, so you know, because of past triggers, Sebastian would go in the, started walking to the bus like this and would look like, like that. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. When oh he would see God. him. So I was like, what happened? What happened? And the lady's like, no, you know, I can't really tell you too much or thing. And I had to explain to my son because God forbid the foot would have been on the other shoe. And that was my son. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what that mom is going through, you mm -hmm. know. Um, God bless her. But the, 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 she wasn't supposed to tell me that much, but because I had a good relationship with her, she told me he's getting off his meds. And, you know, she's trying to weave, weave him out of them. Mm. And she was like, and he just, you know, I don't know when this yeah, Sebastian is like so sweet and like so thing that she she would sit Sebastian in the front with, with her mm -hmm. all the time. And she was like, and if he makes that snow, so he just, it's not like he, the kid ever touched him or did anything to him, mm -hmm. but that's what we're going to think automatically, mm -hmm. right? And so with what that's going back on what she was saying, like um, the same way we have them in classroom by needs, but this system is so broken that that will never happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, five dreams. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and you know, there there's, I, I don't want to throw his name, but there's someone who, you know, a celebrity, a big person, and he has an awesome, um, an awesome child as well as well. And we discussed a lot of things within our community. He's also from the Bronx. And he had told me like he would have loved to have like an Uber for special needs kids. Oh my God. But the insurance 
liability on it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, God be with us, man. Like, I, 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 you know, I don't know how to fix it. But if we give you any comfort out of this podcast, it's for you guys to know that you're not alone, that it happened to everyone. Her child went from being in a car seat, jumping around, you know, all of that, to mm -hmm. now in the smooth transitions. Yeah. So we are a mirror of whatever mom just really got a newly diagnosed. It happens. Please don't take none of the ghetto stuff we said we did. <laughs> We're trying to save you from that. But I want what I want from you girls and men is to never settle for anything that is not comfortable for your child. No matter what IP, no matter who evaluates your child, mm -hmm. nobody knows them better than you. You're your biggest. You're your biggest child your child's biggest advocate correct so that's what i want to say with that wait i want to give one more story can i give you another story you can give me two. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so at the same time right they switched his his route again this is um this is another time actually he was like six years old and miss maddie which is one of our listeners i want to give her, her a shout out she was um his kindergarten and first grade teacher oh that's awesome so maddie um so she had the good fun time to him. Yeah, she loved him. <laughs> like, like, legit. She lives in Hawaii, and she's like still to this day. We text each other and like awesome. keep in contact. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Aiden was having the same thing. There was somebody loud on the bus. He was um like lashing out, and then the thing is, he was going after the person, and it was a humongous girl. This girl must have been in high school, mm -hmm. like bigger than me, bigger than you, like heavy set. And he has no fear. So Mr. Aiden, Eva, and he was going to go and grab her hair. Right? Girl. When Ms. Maddie saw that she was going to put Aiden on the bus and the girl was waiting for him in the door. Para darle golpe a Aiden. Oh, my She God. was like, my baby's not going on the bus. I'm taking him off the bus. She called me. She's like, Marcia, you better get your butt down here. I'm going to keep him on. I'm going to keep him in after school with me until you arrive. I'm not. I don't feel safe leaving him on the bus. Another oh. thing to switch him to the bus. But can you, <laughs> can you imagine? Aiden's little butt over here trying to uh, bully But then it's kid. also not the child's fault either. <laughs> you know, the because uh, she doesn't look at no, Aiden no, no. as little or big. She's or, like, no, he's going after He's me. just I'm like, done. you started with me. But you see what I'm trying to say? And it's like, you know, my sister, my family, when I told the story of the thing, she's like, well, you have to take Sebastian. I was like, no, Sebastian's going to have to learn. Mm -hmm. As long as the, the the lady, he didn't have a parent, but the bus, said, she's like, listen, he sits in the first row. Like, you know what I'm saying? The kid does. It's just a noise that scares him. Yeah. I was like, cool. He has to learn on it because, yeah. you know, the environment is not always going to be what they want. So that's another thing. Like the, the bus para that he used to have. We worked a lot with that. Like, sometimes it's going to be noisy. Sometimes it's not going to be noisy, and that's okay. And like teaching him coping mechanisms, you know? So that's where the teaching goes into all of that. Did you ever do, like, um, noise cancellation or no? And not like with the, he doesn't like the sensation of the, of the headphones and the wow. thing. The sickle pop. Action. So, yeah, it's important to have people on your team, like... Miss Maddie wasn't getting paid extra first thing with Aiden after school. And she had to stay with him for like two weeks until they switched the bus route Aww. every day. So that was another added thing to the play. I was go I was teaching on like 17th and 6th. So I would have to leave work immediately, go to his school on in East Harlem, pick him up, then take the public transportation with him home. But she was doing that out of like the goodness of her heart. So it's like, you know. I got blessed with a Miss Maddie too. That's what I'm saying. His like, name is um, Mr. O. Ronald, shout out to him, but um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm telling you guys, just pray and try not to give too much negative energy because our children feed from that. Yeah, and I'm not perfect. It took me a couple of years to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so now we're gonna get into um another uh avenue, avenue, whatever segue. Yeah. So we're going to talk about um, Steph's organization and um, tell us about One Blue One Heart, Blue at, Heart a time. at a Time, guys. Um, so One Blue Heart at a Time is a 501c3 that I started, uh, wow, it's been 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I started it because I wanted to create a safe space for moms and dads with children on the spectrum. And I felt like there was OT, there was speech, there was school, but there was nothing recreational for our children. Mm -hmm. 
And swimming was something that I felt saved me and my son's life. Like, remember, guys, I said from three to five, it was like the hardest times. Um, I feel that when Sebastian learned how to swim, a lot changed. And it was crazy to know that there was one program in the Bronx, the highest barrel with kids on the spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, um, let me add that. It was one special needs program, and it was, it is called Reach Academy. So when I started my organization, I wanted to share that with my community. So many people did not know about this program. Mm -hmm. So I started um, doing events. I did say I was a waitress for a very long time. So I come from a strong team of people who been on this journey with me before I became public with it. Um, they let, you know, they donated their space, their time, their support, their food. <laughs> they go for me to host all these events for me to be able to take um, the most of the profits to go for that, mm -hmm. for the for the foundation. And it's grown and we do amazing things. Um, the summer before we went jet skiing, which yeah. that was amazing. Um, you can find on my page at one blue heart at a time, underscore after each letter. So one underscore blue, underscore heart, underscore. I didn't want to change the name. That was the only way I could <laughs> have it. So one blue heart at a time on Instagram and also one blue heart at a time dot com. And you can see what inclusion and um brings to our children right, right? The, the different things we get we could tap into that we're not able that they're not able to say or express um so it's such a it's so like um how can i say this it's such like a fulfilling yeah a satisfactory, satisfactory. Como una sensación de, you can say it in Spanish. Una sensación como, no, no, no te lo puedo ni explicar el sentimiento que me ha dado, um, what I have done with One Blue Heart at yeah. the time. It's been more therapeutic for me than what other people think I've done for them. I haven't been as active as I would like mm -hmm. because the world opened up again. And I, I started doing lives all through the pandemic mm -hmm. and I connected with so many parents and people and I miss you guys. I, I really do. <laughs> and I'm trying to get back to it into a routine where I'm consistent and I want to come with content and maybe, you know, I could kick off one of my new lives with you yeah. um, on it. That would be super cool. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if I rambled a little no, bit no, about it, good. but um, that's One Blue Heart at a Time. So One Blue Heart at a Time, sum it up, is a nonprofit brought by an awesome mom in honor of my son, Sebastian, who's an the autism spectrum. And what we do is that we raise money, we sell merch, we sell hats, we raise money to support autism programs for the children in our community. So yeah. one, one of the big <laughs> things that she did, which I loved, and it's like, I feel like you do it every season, they um, get money to be able to give a donation of a scholarship for children to attend the REACH program. Because even though it is um, you know, something that is for children with special needs, you know, there is a small fee that goes with it and some people cannot afford it. So the most beautiful thing is that she gives that gift of swimming to a child. And you know, our children are so the leading cause of death in autism is drowning mm -hmm. with children with autism is drowning. I think it's like, uh, I want to say one in 22 kids. It might so be it was important for me for that to happen. And there's big goals, big visions for, for One Blue Heart at a time. I feel like people see me and they're like, her child is autistic. It's okay, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm glad that I'm able to show that and be comfortable. I, I waited as long as I did to become a, a publicly a advocate mm -hmm. because I didn't want to like people to know like my weakness. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to give people like that power because what you put out there mm -hmm. on social media, it's going to do good, but it's also could come back mm -hmm. bad. You know, yeah. people are like, mm -hmm. yeah. that's what it is. But overall, you know, One Blue Heart at a Time has, I will continue as, uh, you know, to God gives me my last breath to continue advocating and growing for the community for sure. Because it's definitely not no one listening or doing this. There should be an autism special needs softball program. There should be basketballs. There should be all of this in all of these parks, Dykeman Park, Van Corlin Park, all of this. And 
they're not doing nothing but we're working on some things we're working i gotta connect you with one of um somebody that i know from like childhood he actually does an art like a running program like it's like mighty milers but not really it's like in the community though so i'm gonna yeah. connect you at that's what i don't know i'm gonna get you the information and connect with you guys so that maybe one blue heart or heart at a time can do something like that with them because the thing is he he has like sponsorships with nike and stuff like that All so right, if we, we can get it together yeah you know that would be amazing. i definitely wanted they they stopped the softball program that sebastian was in in 2019 they didn't open it again oh wow. so i definitely want to redo that yeah because i think i feel like for our kids like you know softball is great and i feel like it's a good way for kids to feel included and 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 as a team you're not gonna look at a person with special needs and be like oh my god no he can't be part of our team when it's a team it's a team so it's easy to bring somebody in even if they are different than you you know of and and it helps to for the kids to feel um i don't want to use the word the n-word uh, like they're typically developing peers mm -hmm. so with that comadres I'm i gonna... like that i like that <laughs> i like that a lot i'm using that because i don't like that word either but yeah i don't like yeah. that um so, yeah so to sum it up me. yeah thank you so much oh, so. you came all the way over here too guys she had to come all the way to where um I do my where well, I have my hair extension with yeah, so my partner Roxanne. There so. we go. So she we're here in the salon. Toby Salon. Toby Salon. And um she has a hair extension line as well. Look at this beautiful with hair. Man, <laughs> I haven't even combed it. Thank you. Um yes, I have a partner. Her name is Roxanne here by Roxanne on Instagram. Mm -hmm. She does weddings, she's amazing. So we partner up on the hair extension line, and this is also a woman-owned salon. She's been having this salon in Washington Heights for over 15, 17 years. So shout out to Roxanne. She is amazing. And then her and I partner up to add an extension to the business with having hair extensions for the ladies in our community. Yes. All right, guys. And with that, comadres, thank you for spending the afternoon with us and have a good one. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye guys. Till next time. And even dating. Entre comadres.